Okay, today uh, we're going to be working on a BMW 2013 BMW X3 with a 2.0 liter in there. Um, we're getting a no start. In other words, it cranks, but it doesn't start. Uh, we have a drivetrain malfunction. Uh, it says do not turn the engine off. Engine restart will not be possible. So I have this code and I also have another code that's saying right over here, Drivetrain vehicle cannot be restarted. So the computer locked it from restarting. And what that really means is that there's a fault in the engine or the transmission that if if uh, if it didn't disable it, it would only get worse. Um, it's protecting the engine. So if this didn't have this and it just had a check engine light and the car would start and you drive down the block and all of a sudden, you know, you have a seven dollars $8,000 engine failure, uh, what would you rather have, that or this light on so you can bring it to a dealer or try to diagnose it yourself by videos that I make? So, the first thing I'm going to figure out is I'm going to pull the codes out of the car and see what we have. Okay, so I'm going to see what we have as far as codes. It's automatically turning the car off. I'll go just right into the control unit, drivetrain, and the computer. And let's read the codes. All right, it's going to have, okay, the outside temperature sensor, that's because I took the bumper off. Uh, the Cadillac converter, that's not the reason. It's the Valvetronic servo activation malfunction circuit. That's definitely it. And Valvetronic, uh, no movement detected. Uh, yeah, the Valvetronic, so basically it's going to be, uh, that's what it seems to be, uh, the Valvetronic, these codes. Um... So what we're going to have to do is uh, get a worksheet on troubleshooting the, the Valvetronic, which is, I'll show you where that is. And it's a, basically, it's a servo motor that controls the secondary shaft on the camshaft. Um, if that doesn't move, the valves can stay open and the car will never start. It's as if, like, as if the valves were, like, like if the timing jumped, something like that. And these cars are known for timing chain. I just I have a whole bunch of videos on. I did another BMW with the uh, timing chain, big job. Uh, they're known for that. This car has the original one, so we have to dig in deeper and see what we have. Valvetronic servo motor that was given those codes is right here. All right, this plug plugs into here. Okay, that's the Valvetronic motor. The bad news is this valve cover has to come off, which is pretty entailed. And on the X3, you have to take off the vacuum pump. It's buried back there. So you got to take a lot of things out of the way to get to it. I mean, it's not, it's not, um, it's physically hard to do, but not mentally. In other words, like the troubleshooting aspect of that part. What I did, I had um, a Valvetronic motor laying around, a, a, a known good one. I grounded it and I plugged the plug into it and sure enough the codes went off. The only code that's coming up now is that the Valtronic can't set its limits, which of course it can't set it because it's outside of the engine. All right, inside, once I take it over, I'll explain it to you. Um, two things could have happened. The valve motor seized or the uh, the cam, the um, Valtronic uh, cam shaft is binding, or it broke, or both. It broke, it seized, and the uh, 
Valtronic motor blew out. Now, being that it is working and the codes went away, um, it still doesn't start. It probably doesn't start because the Valtronic, I gotta explain it, it's a little bit different. It has two camshafts. Let's say it has two. One of them is the eccentric camshaft. Now, if that pushes the valves open, it, the, the car is not going to have any compression. It won't start. And that's probably what's happening right now. And that's why when that thing set the code, it said you can't, you know, starting the vehicles is not possible. All right? So, and another thing that goes bad with these cars is, you see the wiring harness? The wiring harness goes directly, directly into the um, computer. This is the computer over here. All right, the DME. Now, sometimes there's drivers in there that fry out. That's rare, but it could happen. In other words, like if this motor, if this motor, like in here, if it gets filled up with oil and, sh and, and you know, it shorts out the wires, it could, it could possibly blow out the computer. Like in here, you see in here, you see it's dry. So that's a good sign that you know, and plus I see the the uh, mo the uh, the um, motor moving. That motor constantly moves. In other words, like you open the door, it's gonna move. Um, you put the key in the ignition. It's always checking it stops. It's always you know making sure that it's functional. Okay, and when it doesn't see that anymore, it sets those codes that I just showed you. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what codes we got now. All right, it's gonna show you in here. Saying the headlights, the outside temperature, the time, right side m malfunction. That's because I have all the headlights, the whole bumpers off and everything. So those fog light, everything's off. So of course we're gonna have that. That doesn't mean anything right now. We want to see, you see, we want to see any kind of a drivetrain failure. And what we do, we go in here. Right now, of course, it's just the headlights, which we all know everything is disconnected here. So these are normal. These are all going to go away, but you don't see any, you don't see any, uh, um, drivetrain malfunction codes. All right. Usually it moves. The computer checks it while well, it was moving. Trust me. So. That's a good sign that the electrical, that's a fast way to do it. If you have one of them laying around, it's a fast way to uh, check it. If not, you're gonna have to check it. You know, I try to do things where people, you know, don't have fancy scan tools. Oh, you see it moving? You saw it move? It was moving while I was talking. See, it checks that, even with the car off. It, it always, it's always checking to make sure that that, that um, extensive shaft is in the proper position. It's at, it's at its proper uh, stops or wherever the computer wants it. All right, you saw that move. Okay, so what was I saying? Um, so I try to do it in more basic ways. People don't have, you know, five dollars $6,000 scan tool. Um, so if I do it with that, then what good is it? Most of you guys are not gonna, not, you know. So I try to do it the more simple way. You would have to check, you would have to go online and look for, like, even your local library automotive section should have wiring diagrams of where the power should be with the ignition on. Uh, I was gonna do that, but like I said, I did a shortcut and everything seems to work. So bottom line, the valve cover has to come off because of that, I have to uh, see what's going on in there. So I know I got electric. I know the electrical's fine, ground's fine. And now I'm gonna start taking off the valve cover. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm probably going to remove uh, the plastic pieces over here and the windshield wipers just to give me more room because like I said, there's the um, vacuum pump is in the back and you know, it's just really hard to work this way. It's a little extra work to take all this off, but it's, it's, just, a, it's just an easier way instead of, you know, trying to get in there and you know, and I don't think it's going to work. So first thing I'm going to do is take off this plastic piece over here. You got this this uh, gasket that goes along the side over there, over up here. Just take that out of the way. Got a 10 millimeter. Make sure you disconnect the negative ba battery terminal. Got a 10 millimeter nut right there. You take that off. Take this down over here. We got Torx Torx T30. 
all right there and on the other side and then this thing slides out and then we're going to take it from there so once you get those out it just slides right out like that you see that all right you take this out of the way and you work on the um windshield wipe wipers take that one off and that one off okay has these little trim caps you take them off this is a 16 millimeter nut the same same as the one over there and then on each side over here you have a, um well, it looks like a screw and a phillips head yeah phillips head here and on the other side and just mark it like on the shaft here and on the um the wiper itself so you get the proximity of where it goes back it's not really critical but when it wipes you don't want it to go over too far or you know down too far and what you do is you just press on this press on the see that? press like that and she'll come right out all right it's hard to do here we go and it comes right out and you do the same thing with the other one and you can mark a driver and make sure you know it goes back the same way and then it comes right it's up there and it just pops out there's push pins underneath over here you see these little pins you got to be careful because you can break them one of them over here broke um now how much extra access well <clears throat> how much extra access it gives you you know it's kind of debatable you may not want to take it off uh i'm gonna take i'm gonna take the uh the brace off and that's it i'm not gonna take this plastic thing off you know it doesn't really give you that much so if you want to skip that step by all means skip it you know if you can do it without it i took it off you know it doesn't really matter i did it for you guys to see you know if you want to do it or not all right i'm gonna go next i'm gonna take that brace off okay to take the brace off you're gonna use an e14 it's the inverted star you see uh, it's an e14 and just take those two bolts out and then these two bolts right here a 10, 10 millimeter hex. So what you're gonna wanna do after that is just disconnect all your plugs, all your wires, all the wiring harnesses, basically just wanna move everything out of the way. And then you're gonna relieve the pressure of the high fuel, pressure fuel pump. All right, you're gonna disconnect the, the lines to the high pressure, pressure fuel pump. And over here, you got your, um, I don't know what size that is, the E10s or E8s, I'm not sure. You take those off, and the whole little little spider comes off. You have this uh, vacuum line connected to the T over here, and this other T goes to the uh, valve cover. Not the valve cover, the, uh, the, um, the engine cover, plastic engine cover. Move this one out of the way, all right? You take the um, the solenoid off over here. All right, it has a two star. Looks like they're star T thirties, and then you take this off. Okay, now you have your your wiring harnesses here. You'll see everything. You just mark everything if you're not too sure. You have grounds right here, and a ground right there on that side. Okay, then you move them. You just move things out of the way, nice and neat, the way you took it off. Uh, once you dig in there, it ain't that hard. I'm going to move a lot of the wiring out of the way, and then I'm going to continue. Okay, these come out, the um, ignition coils. You pop up, and it kind of slides out. The, uh, this plug, it kind of slides out like that. And you just push them up. And go, it's good to mark them. Like, see, number four. This is the number one cylinder is always in the front. So one, two, three, four. Mark them so you put them back in the same exact, exact spot, you know. It's just a good idea. Anything you take off you're not familiar with or you're not changing with something brand new, always good to mark it. All right? All right. After that, you got the um, injector wires here, ground wire here, injector wire here, ground there, injector, and injector. Take those all out. And this is the harness over here. You see it? This whole thing, you got to release it and move it out of the way. The hardest part is going to be getting the uh, bolts off the um, off the uh, vacuum pump in the back. I thought it would give you more room like that, but obviously, it, you know, it doesn't. So it's your quota if you're going to take that thing off and not that plastic thing. In the front, just pull these uh, the wires away. 
They have little clips here that slide in. Just, just move them out of the way. Over here, PVC vent over here, there's little, little um, tabs. You push them in on both sides and just pull it down. See, it's, it's down. And uh, just leave it loose right there. And the cam sensors right here, one here and one here, disconnect the plugs. That's good on the side over there. And I'm gonna continue, like I said, I'm gonna take off the um, the little uh, the fuel injection uh, rail. Take off the, uh, the, the power lug here, the positive lug right here. You got a T50, you take off this, so you can just move this out of the way a little bit. To relieve the pressure, you can put a rag here. As long as the engine's ice cold, put a rag here. When you crack it, a little bit of fuel is gonna come out, no big deal. All right, that's a 17 millimeter open end wrench. And for the injector ones over here, it's a 14 millimeter. These bolts are uh, E8, like the star, inverted star, E8. Hold on, I have to take them out. Okay, there's a plug right here, electrical connector, take that off. And then once you got this all, all off, this whole thing comes off. Take here, right there. And this little thing comes right out. All right, you move that out of the way. Okay, I want you to take the uh, eight millimeter nut off for the ground, then you get the 10 millimeter and these come out. And you take the uh, brace off the, uh, oh, another one right here, 10 millimeter. And then you take this little brace off. You don't have to remove the injectors, but just disconnect the wires, but you don't have to remove the injectors. The injectors, first of all, require a special tool and I don't believe you have to remove them. All right, you wanna move some of the, the lines out of the way. All right, these are the injectors, everything. These things come right off. All right, we're gonna take the um, high, pressure, high pressure fuel pump. It's a T30 on one side, T30 on the other side, and 17 uh, millimeter open end wrench to take the, uh, the nuts off. And we'll just pop that out. And then we're gonna take this, um, the Valtronic seal over here, these two bolts out and take this little um, gasket off. I have this plastic piece that goes here. It has um, two, let me see what they are. It's also the E, E6. The E6, it's like this, okay? You got one back here, and one here, and one here. And then over here, you have this little harness that hooks onto it, like it just stays on this one. And the same thing over here, these two, it's for, it's for these two, the O2 sensor wires that hang on the back of that. Then you take this out of the way, okay? And now we're gonna just unclip this harness over here, see how it comes up? It's gonna unclip it over here and move it out of the way. So basically these, that one over here, right? You just take the tabs up on both sides and this can swing all the way out of the way. And the back harness that was over here, just move it all out of the way so enough that you could take the valve cover off. Now we're gonna get to the back right there. That um, the vacuum pump. And once they take the vacuum pump off, then we can take off all the screws to the valve cover and pop the valve cover off and see finally what the hell happened. All right, it's right here. And there's three Torx bolts. Um, I can show you what I... It's hard to see. It's hard to see them, but you gotta feel around for them. There's, there's one here, then there's one on the bottom, and then there's one on this side. There's three of them, all right? Once you take those three off, and you gotta disconnect the vacuum port right here. See this port? 
that gets disconnected from here. Sorry about this. You know, I'm trying to, I have a headlight on and it's distorting the video. But anyhow, you take that off to the, and then it comes off because the valve cover has a hole and that's where this uh, pump goes in. So you have to take the pump off first. All right, I'll get that off. I got it out. It's um, three, see those, those uh, three uh, Torx 40 bolts. This goes all the way in the back and it's right against the firewall. On the particular X3 series, it's very, very tight. Um, and I used a stubby, a shallow Torx 40. So when I'm, it, when I'm taking it off, I have enough room between the uh, pump and the firewall. All right, now I'm gonna take off the uh, valve cover and see what happened. A quick note, you have to take off the um, the uh, cam sensors, uh, mark them, intake and exhaust that are on the front right there because they, they do interfere with taking it off in the front over there. Okay, so what happened now, originally, if you follow the videos, I got a, a code of no movement now. This is the this is the um, the um, servo motor for the valve tronic. Okay, I'm gonna take these two cups off. These two uh, things, uh, you're gonna have to take the um, injectors out in order to replace this. But from just looking at this, there was no movement. So look where it was stuck. Here's the here's that extensive shaft, the other shaft, not the intake. The it's on it's on the intake side. But you see the stop? It's, it's supposed to be all the way over here. So what it is now, it's all the way open. It's opening up the valves. Now, when you crank the engine and it's all the way open, as if, that's if all the valves are open, not making any compression. That's why it put the code and it said that the um, uh, engine, engine restart is not possible. It's because it, it wouldn't even run like that anyhow. But, you know, a computer only knows so much. But... Uh, point being is that when I tried to crank it over, it wouldn't want to start, and that's because over here, see, there's a stop. That stop, see this little lever? It's on the other stop. It, this whole um, cam is supposed to be resting on this stop, and it's all the way open. So that means most of the valves on this side are leaking, so to speak. Um, and that's why I didn't want to start. So now, hopefully... What I'm gonna do is, cause these cars are known for the timing chain. I did a timing chain. I have a video on how to replace this timing chain. I'm gonna visually check it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the cam lock on it, put it at top dead center, put the cam lock on it, put the, um, the flywheel top dead center for the crank lock on it and see if it's all lined up. If it's all lined up, then the only thing that failed was the valve tronic motor that I'm gonna replace. And that could be considered, a, a, you know, not so bad. Um, if you wanted to replace the timing chain um, guides, you know, it, it's uh, my honest opinion, you should. It's a lot of money, but it's worse if, if it fails because this one looks original and they all fail. So, you know, what the, is there still a lot more work to do in order to change that, but that'll be your call as a consumer. And my call as a mechanic will be to replace it. All right, we're going to continue removing the valve tronic servo motor. So I just wanted to show you something. I have a tool in here. You see this piece? Oh, it can't even come out. It's so big. You see that piece right there? That's broken. That was right in this area like that. So needless to say, this car needs the whole timing chain <clears throat> to be replaced with the guides. Um, I have a lock on this one. I didn't put the lock on the other way, but I'm pretty sure that this one didn't jump, so it didn't bend valves. And that's a good thing, but it's still a lot of work. You want to know how to replace that timing chain? Look at my other video, video on how to do that. I show you exactly how to do the whole entire thing, all the tools you need and everything like that. So getting back to this, the uh, Valvetronic, 
um, I'm going to remove the injectors and these are, uh, I believe these are 30 because there's, there's uh, bolts behind the injector so you can't, you can't leave the injectors in because you have to take off these, uh, these tubs or whatever you want to call them to get to the Valtronic. So we're going to do that now. Now to remove the injectors, um, you need a, an, a, another tool. Uh, this screws onto the top of the injector and it's like a slap hammer and it slaps them out. Um, I mean, you can try prying on them, you know, but these are very expensive. And when you take them out, make sure you you mark them like the number one cylinder, number one, number two, number three, number four, because they're all different as far as they're programmed to the, into the computer. So if you switch them around, you're going to have nothing but problems. So it's always a good practice. Whatever you take out, put it exactly back where it belongs. Okay? So you put it in there, and you just basically go like that, and they come right out without breaking them because there's a, a nice tight seal in the bottom. So, you know, and they're expensive, so you don't want to really pry on them. But you could probably get away with, with not using the tool, you know, but it's up to you. You see the tux dirty right there and right there, and the same thing on the other one. They were hidden by the injectors. That's why they have to come off. I'm going to take them off now, those tux dirties. And they just pry right up. They have a little, there's like a little dowel, like a head gasket dowel. They may be a little stubborn, but they come right up. All right, you take that, and there's the gears right there. And what you gotta pay attention to when you're replacing this uh, the Valvetronic is the gear itself is not stripped. Because if that's stripped, then you're gonna have to take the, uh, the springs off and take the rod out, and you need a tool for these springs. So you gotta make sure that this gear is okay. All right, then this one, same way. It's got a gasket. See, it goes into the little the dowels right there and right there. Oh, let me show you. See, they're right over there, there, and there. All right, and there's gaskets. Just make sure you take the gaskets and don't drop nothing into the. If you have the spark plugs out, don't drop nothing into the cylinders. Now there's an oil feed right here that oil, that feeds the gear. And it's a little little bolt right here. Just take that off and just pop it out. Okay? Now to get the gear to, to get the um the servo out, you're gonna have to use a Torx 30. Um T25. I'm pretty sure it was a 30. All right, yeah, this fits, but it's probably a 30. I don't have a 30. This is fitting, but it's probably a 30. If you have a 25, I guess you can do it again the same way. And what you're going to do, you see how it turns? You want to turn it, and you see how this is moving? All right, and what you want to do is this stop. You want to take this stop out first. And then you're going to take the other stop out. I think you got to take both of them out. Let me take this one out and show you the correct way to do it. Because you can't just pull this out when it's meshed with the gears over here. Okay, yeah. You take both of them out. It's an 11, 11 uh, socket. The reason why you take them out is because you want the cam to go all the way around and it may hit this other side because there's a flat spot over here and once you're at the flat spot then you can remove the servo. And now once you have them both out, the one that was here and there, now you can have more clear movement, nothing's going to hit. When you see the flat spot? Go. That's it, it's basically out. But what the problem is now is that it still has spring pressure from all these springs. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take, let, let, me, let me do something and I'll explain it to you, hold on. 
Okay, now these are all torques dirty. There's three of them. Okay, gotta be careful. All right, I got it right there. It fell down. There's one here, one on the other side of this, and one right there. Okay? And now, you're gonna get some kind of a lock wrench and put it on the surfaces that don't touch anything. In other words, it's, it's not machined in any surface. It's just part of the uh, rough surface of the um, uh, that intermediate shaft, the eccentric camshaft, and see how you can turn it, because you're gonna wanna turn it. And basically, you just keep it like that, and there's no more pressure on it, okay? And then this, Uh, maybe needs a little persuasion with a screwdriver very slightly. Let me do that, and I'll be right back because I'm one-handed over here. And basically, just wiggle it out, and there you go. And it's out. Okay. So now, put that down. You get the new one. Make sure... Clean. You put it down like that. All right. Put your uh, talk sturdies back in there. You talk them up, and we're gonna take it to the next step. So now, once you got it all talked down, you put your uh, T30 or this is a 25. It's a little loose. Maybe T30 in here. Now, you're gonna release. Hold this because it can kick back until it hits the gear. And now, we're gonna to wanna to wind it up. See that? Take this off. And we wanna get this lever basically over here so we could put both stops back in like we did before when we took them out. All right, so we, this way. And it wants to kick back on you because it's spring-loaded so you gotta Gotta do it with two hands. See that? A little bit more. See, it wants to move. Okay. So right now that's good. I'll leave it like that. We're gonna put the um the stops back in. These are the stops, they're exactly the same. But I noticed a lot of cars that you see that little indent? That's usually always, when you're looking at the front of the engine, it's always on the uh, right-hand side. Now, that's probably because it leans on that side the most. But they're exactly the same. All right, just screw them in, torque them in. See? They're both in there. And then we continue cranking it. See, it wants to go back. Let me crank it. Hold on. Because it has spring pressure. Because every time I'm going like this, it wants to go back. So you got to do it with two hands. Okay? Keep doing it. Basically, when it's that's it. It's at its stop. You leave it like that, and that's set. You leave it alone. Then now you're supposed to put new gaskets on the um, on the little buckets that go here first. It's a good idea to do that. Put those on, and then we continue after that. We put the injectors. Okay, and again, make sure you put this uh, oil feed tube back in and tighten it right there. And basically you can feel where it snaps into place. It just locks into place and that's it. And to make sure the little pointer on the bottom is not hitting the gear. It won't once it locks in the proper way. Okay, now we get new gaskets and put the buckets on and then take it from there. Make sure that the housing Bucket housing is nice and clean. The surfaces are clean. All right, use a torque wrench. Put them 80 foot, uh, 80 uh, inch pounds, and then another half, uh, another quarter turn. I already installed that one. Make sure, like I said, the surfaces are good. Uh, if you're gonna reuse the old gasket, put gasket sealer on both sides. Very, very thin, light coating on it, and you should be good to go. And um, after that. We'll take it from there. Okay, next, you would, it's a good idea to clean the injector tips. They have a seal here. 
Um, if you want to replace that seal, you can. Um, I'm not going to replace it. It seems like I, f I feel it has a little bit of an edge. Um, it's a good practice to replace it, but I'm just not doing it. Um, and make sure that the that there's the injector ports over here. As you turn it, you're going to see a sh the shiny inside pintle on each one. Just make sure you see each one. It sparkles. You'll see it from a certain angle in the sun or with a headlight. You'll see a certain angle. Make sure they all sparkle. That means that they're all clear. All right. After you clean it, clean it with um, carburetor cleaner and compressed air. And see, I don't know. I can't get it. I really can't get it to shine. You know, this has to be done in person. But you see this on there's little holes. As you turn it, you'll see the shiny inside. So just make sure, you know, you see the, the shiny inside on all of them. If you don't, that means one of them is clogged. And man, you have to take everything apart if you have a, you know, misfire code or something like that. So it's just good practice to do that. And make sure, again, you mark them. You see, this is the fourth one. This goes all the way in the back. Number one is in the front. Two, three, and four. Uh, if you switch them around, you're gonna get an, you're gonna get a code. They're all coded to each each cylinder. All right. And when you put them in, it's always good. Like I said, the same way you put them, in, take took them out. But anyhow, the the, the plug part it goes like one. Of the, it goes like this, and then on the other side, it goes like this. Okay. And make sure that this part over here, the square part, see the square part? The square part is straight on both of them, on all four of them. Because when you put that um, that bracket, that bracket lines them up nice. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about after I just put them in. It's in here. And you see what I'm saying? See, these have to line up like that. All right. And you put the other one in there. And you tighten them up. And you do the same thing on the other side. Okay. It's a good idea to check the spark plugs. Uh, you want to replace them. To, again, as another special tool, it's a very thin wall socket if you don't have it. If you don't have it, you're not going to be able to take them out. Um, let me show you the spark plug. <clears throat> See, it has a very, a very thin wall. I mean, it's a very, very thin socket. And in there, they're very thin, the walls. Once they're all torqued properly, make sure you don't lose the little ground nut. Okay, and they're all seated. Um, then you can reverse the removal procedure to um, install everything. I'm gonna stop it here because I'm going, I'm going, uh, I'm doing the timing chain. Uh, so I'm not putting the valve cover on obviously so I can't you know show you how to do that But I show you how to I show you how to take it off take it off So, uh, you know, you take it from here and reverse the uh, removal procedure All right guys, um, let me show you If you're gonna take the spark plugs out you see the difference in the size of these uh, spark plugs Sockets, this is the thin wall one that you're gonna need 12.14 millimeter and this is a regular one and you see, like, it's it's a lot thicker. So, that's what you're going to need if you want to take out the spark plugs. This car looks like it was running rich. Could be because of the timing was off. And that uh, Valvetronic valve letting in, uh, you know, lose low compression will give you that black city look, too. So... That's the case. Okay, guys, Motor Car Nut, please subscribe, hit the like button, any questions, leave them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. I got tons of videos on all specs, all aspects of automotive, from putting air in your tire to doing transmissions and engines and whatever. I do it all. All right? So um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.